Hello and welcome back to The Crime Reel. It's been a busy week uploading seven true crime cases in seven days. If you haven't had a chance to check out the other cases from our week of crime, the links are in the text below. They are definitely worth catching up on. So for our final upload this week, we will be looking at the case of the Cooper brothers from Coventry in England. Roger Cooper worked as a manager at a Costco store on the outskirts of Coventry. He lived with his long-term partner, Susan Potts, but this did not stop him embarking on an affair with not one, but two fellow Costco employees. Sinead Sweeney, who little is known about, and Samina Imam, who was the head of regional marketing. By 2014, 41-year-old Roger and 34-year-old Samina had been having a relationship for around two years. This was strictly against Costco's policy, and as such the affair had remained a secret. However, as the end of the year approached, Samina issued Roger with an ultimatum. Leave your girlfriend, or it's over. Roger agreed that he would leave Susan, and that the following year would be different. Taking him at his word, Samina began making plans for their new life together. In late November, she booked a two-night stay at the Malmaison Hotel in Birmingham for the 24th and 25th of December. She was so excited that this would be the first time that they were able to spend Christmas together. However, the reality was far different. While Samina was busy making plans for their future, Roger, who had no intention of leaving his long-term girlfriend nor jeopardising his Costco career, was making different plans with his 39-year-old brother, ex-soldier, David. The different plan was how could they kill Samina. Roger decided that she was a problem for him and he wanted that problem solved. An initial plan was formed. Following a Christmas party, Samina was staying at the Premier Inn Hotel in Solihull. David would hire a car and wait in the hotel car park until Samina arrived for the night and then abduct her. The two brothers, both of them were Star Wars fans, communicated in Star Wars codes. Death Star complete. Stay on target, stay on target. You are expected, Vader. However, Samina's taxi dropped her immediately outside the hotel and David could not get to her. This time he texted Roger in broken French, say nil point, l'oeuvre, slash l'oeuvre, La fenêtre n'est pas ouvre, which was later interpreted to mean there's no point, no score. The window, brackets of opportunity, close brackets, is closed. The brothers regrouped and came up with a new plan. On Christmas Eve 2014, Samina and Roger left work within a few minutes of each other. They drove off in separate cars but met up close by. Samina unpacked her luggage from her BMW, which included a bottle of Bellini and some snacks for their trip, and then she got into Roger's Audi, leaving her car parked on the quiet street. As far as Samina was concerned, she was headed off on her romantic two-night Christmas break. Roger said that they needed to make a detour on the way to the hotel to visit his brother in order to exchange Christmas gifts. Samina called her sister on the drive and confirmed that she would see her at their parents' home on Boxing Day, the 26th of December. The couple arrived at David's house in Huendon Drive, Leicester, at around 5pm. It is believed that Samina was attacked almost immediately. Both David and Roger were big men, standing at 6 foot 5 and 6 foot 7 inches tall. 5 foot 2 Samina didn't stand a chance. David poured chloroform onto a tea towel and held it over Samina's face until she died. He had purchased a 200ml bottle of chloroform days earlier on eBay. He would later claim that this purchase never arrived after the details were confirmed via his eBay history. By 6.25pm, Roger was on his way back to Coventry, leaving David to dispose of the body. 
Once Roger returned home to his partner, Susan, he sent himself a text from Samina's phone in an attempt to create a false alibi. It said, I am fuming. I am going to where I am truly cared for. He needed to manufacture a reason as to why they hadn't checked into the Malmaison Hotel. Meanwhile, David wrapped Samina's body in an army sleeping bag and cling film and buried her at his allotment on Groby Road in Leicester. In his shed there hung a sign which said, Don't wind me up, I'm running out of places to hide the bodies. By 7.45pm that evening, David was back at home when his partner, Mira Chavda, popped in for a quick visit. She said that there was nothing unusual about his behaviour during that time. Over the following days, the brothers continued to try to cover up their crime. They returned to Samina's car and wiped it down to remove fingerprints and DNA. They abandoned it around 65 miles away in Luton. When Samina failed to turn up at her family's house on Boxing Day, she was reported missing and a search was soon underway. Roger was questioned several times. After initially telling the police that he had last seen Samina at work on Christmas Eve, he later changed his story. He then said that he and Samina had an argument during their trip to Leicester and Samina demanded to be let out of the car. They stopped at a Tesco store close to the M69. She gathered up her things and stormed off. He said that he believed that she was sulking somewhere and hadn't mentioned this when first questioned as he wasn't about to harm his long-term partner about something that would have blown over. On the 2nd of January, Roger broke down in tears during questioning as he read out the text message which he falsely claimed to have been his last from Samina. Two days later, on the 4th of January 2015, Samina's car was found on a residential street in Luton. Her handbag, shopping and luggage were all missing. There were no fingerprints in the vehicle and the seat had been pushed back to accommodate a much taller driver. As data from Samina's phone was analysed, it showed that she had travelled to David's house. The bellini and snacks that she purchased for her trip to Malmaison were discovered in David's fridge and her sat-nav was found in his loft. A tip-off from a member of the public directed them to David's allotment and Samina's body was found. Both Cooper brothers were arrested on suspicion of murder and charges were brought two days later. Whilst in police custody, David described how he killed Samina, saying, I got the chloroform, I poured it over a tea towel and I kind of put it on her face, sat on her lap, arms went up and I grabbed her arms and I forced them down and I was like, just a couple of breaths, um, she didn't wake up. Although he would later change this account and say that he had found Samina's body after he had left to go and move the car and that her death was an accident. When the case went to trial, both of the brothers denied the murder. David admitted to burying Samina's body but denied causing her death. The trial at Birmingham Crown Court lasted over two months ending in late October 2015. In a unanimous decision based on the extensive evidence in the case, the jury found them both guilty of murder. They were each sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in prison, with the judge stating, The use of a poison in a case such as this demonstrates a cold-blooded intention to kill, regardless of the consequences. You work together, hand in glove, in planning and carrying out the murder of a joyful and bubbly young woman, brutally betrayed by a man she loved and his brother. The detective leading the murder hunt described the killing as the most callous offence she had ever investigated. Most murders that occur are spontaneous events driven by anger or jealousy, whereas in this case what we uncovered was weeks and weeks of planning to kill Samina. Numerous attempts on her life and a really unusual cause of death, said Detective Chief Inspector Caroline Marsh. Her father, Din, paid tribute to his daughter, saying, Samina was very special to me and my wife. I could talk for days about Samina and what she meant to us and her sisters, brother, nieces, nephews, family and friends, and it breaks our heart that we cannot have her back home where she should be. 
As a family, we are absolutely devastated at the loss of Samina. Nothing could have prepared us for hearing from the police that they believed that our daughter had been murdered. That concludes today's case. Thank you for listening to The Crime Reel. I hope you have found the cases that I've covered in this week of holiday crimes interesting. Just a small channel announcement. I will be returning to weekly uploads, still on a Wednesday each week. It's still to be decided, but I may change the launch time. Hopefully you will join me then, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the bell button to be informed of future uploads, and remember to catch up with any episodes that you may have missed. Thanks for listening to me. Stay safe. Goodbye.